Welcome everyone to the Honest Review. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing what is widely considered to be the best wireless gaming mouse. And it is no surprise that we are talking about the Logitech G Pro Wireless. The G Pro Wireless is a medium sized mouse coming in light at 80 grams, sporting the Hero 16K optical sensor. It's ambidextrous with fully modular side buttons for all you lefties out there. It's also rocking a 48 hour battery life, high quality switches throughout, power play wireless charging compatible, and excellent software support for full customization. There are so many strong features to this mouse, but before we cover them, I wanna get this out of the way. The wireless technology improvements over the past few years have been incredible. So if you're worried about latency, accuracy, or responsiveness while using wireless, don't. This thing is incredibly accurate. I've never had an issue with connection or performance, and if you've been holding out on trying a wireless gaming mouse for any of those reasons, it may just be the time to give it a go. Now, this mouse was originally $146 when I bought it. Now you can easily find this in the $120 ballpark. That's still a pretty big price tag, considering some of the competition from the glorious Model O and Model O Minus, the G Wolf Skull, and the Cooler Master MM710 that just dropped. All of these mice are 60 bucks or less. They're very light from 67 grams down to 53 and all very well built. So is it worth the extra weight to go wireless? I'll tell you what, I'll give you this honest review and experience from using this mouse and you tell me if you think it's worth it. Out of the box, we get our matte black G Pro wireless, six foot micro USB cable, wireless USB hub, which is for the USB dongle, and an additional 10 gram weight for heavy mouse users. And last but not least, we have our side button replacements and dummy covers for our ambidextrous users. The six foot USB cable pairs to our USB hub that holds the wireless USB dongle. That's a lot of USBs. This setup sits just above your mouse pad. This configuration is how the Lightspeed Wireless achieves wired light connection, and it works great. I can't tell the difference going from wired to wireless mice when using this, and having no cable drag and weight affecting your aim is pure Enjoy. There's really nothing like gaming wireless. The dimensions are four centimeters high, width at its midpoint is 5.9 centimeters, length is 12.5. Now my hand length is 19.5 centimeters and the width is 11.5. I use a fingertip grip on this mouse. When I palm grip it, the side buttons just feel a bit too far back. And also it's just becoming more widely known that you're more accurate when using a fingertip or claw grip. After using this for a while, I realized that my ring finger rested perfectly on the front right hand side, which is normally for your left hand users, but I gave it a shot and I really like it. I never went back. The side buttons are light to press and have a nice crisp actuation with a final click that doesn't affect your aim. All the side buttons are modular and can be disabled in the software or map to your choosing. The button covers are easy to swap out. They're held on magnetically. They just pull away and you can configure your buttons however you like. Now the mouse one and two clicks are crisp, light, and soft. Very small pre-travel and what feels to be a even smaller post-travel. These really quickly became my favorite clicks yet. There's little to no side play whatsoever. The actuators are rated for up to 50 million clicks. scroll wheel has been thinned out to reduce weight, thin rubber ridges covered the width of the wheel, smooth tactile steps, and I have no complaints. Now the mouse 3 is a very light press, surprisingly, definitely an easier press than the other mice that I've tried out. Now for the Hero 16K optical sensor, it's Logitech's best yet and one of, if not the best sensors out. Zero filtering and acceleration applied and very clean one-to-one -one tracking. Software will take you from 100 to 16,000 DPI at intervals of 50. Now I'm sure nobody's gonna be using this mouse at 16,000 DPI, but hey, it's there if you need it. Now the G Pro Wireless was designed with input and collaboration from eSports professionals. And the professional said the DPI toggle switch should be on the bottom of the mouse to avoid any accidental DPI switches in game. And Logitech did just that. You can create up to five different DPI profiles and the top LED cycle letting you know which DPI setting you are on. The lighting control is very well done in the software, and I must note that you never see the RGB while using this mouse because it's always covered up by your palm. I almost feel as if they should have left this out to reduce weight. I do opt to turn this off as you'll never see it while using it, and you gain a bunch of battery life by leaving it off. The pros also recommended that Logitech add another mouse gate at the rear of the mouse to help with smoother glides and the lifespan of the mouse feet. I like these skates, super smooth, even on cloth pads, and they really come to life on 
hard pads. Liftoff distance was also very well done, so low DPI users, no worries there. The side structure and shape reminds me of the G403, but with mirrored sides. Overall, a great shape choice that makes me think so many people will find this easy to transition to. Larger to medium hands will easily find a fingertip and claw grip. Smaller hands will find a perfect palm grip. As far as battery life, with the RGB on, we get 48 hours. Now with the RGB off, you can squeeze out 60 hours of battery life. This thing has never died on me and the battery charges in about two hours. Now it also automatically shuts off after a little idle time. And even if I leave this thing on overnight, I only lose like 1% of my battery life. Now the G Pro is also PowerPlay charging compatible for any of you guys who have the PowerPlay mouse pads. There is a bottom cover and storage section for your USB housing should you want to take this on the go. And I gotta note that this bottom cover is magnetic, so that could affect people using this on metal surfaces. Also, without the cover, we drop down to 77 grams in weight, so I always opt to leave this off. If you want to use the PowerPlay wireless charging adapter, this brings the mouse up to 82 grams. As far as durability, Logitech did thin down the walls to reduce weight, but you can't really tell. I don't feel any flex or have creaks when squeezing on this thing, even as hard as I can. It just feels really solid, and there's no loose parts or rattling on the inside when shaking it. In conclusion, Logitech set such a high standard in performance, weight, design, software, battery life, and overall quality. And the truth is that other companies are innovating and rising to the challenge. Even Logitech own G305 wireless mouse that comes in at under 50 bucks, excellent battery life, light speed wireless, 12K hero sensor, and great quality and design, build integrity, and all, you have to start asking yourself, is the $120 price tag worth it? I continue to ask myself this question as I am starting trials with the glorious Model O and Model O minus, which come in at 67 grams and then 58 grams in weight, and the Cooler Master MM710 at 53 grams, and it's just so hard to choose. I will say that if the G Pro Wireless was 60 grams or less in weight, it would be the best mouse out, period. There is just no substitute for wireless gaming. Even though the weightless paracords do make wired mice feel wireless, it's just not the same. Now, I do plan on doing the weight reduction process to the G Pro Wireless that brings this mouse down to 65 grams in weight. If you guys want to see that, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. I'm actually really excited to do this because the reality stands that lighter mice are just better in helping you be faster and more accurate. I could tell the difference right away when using mice that are just 10 to 15 grams lighter than the G Pro Wireless, and I do feel more accurate in my tracking and my flick shots especially. Pros everywhere just keep migrating over and over to lighter mice, and it's no joke, lighter is better. But don't think that makes this mouse irrelevant. There are tons of professionals who compete in esports to this day using the G Pro Wireless. I could go on and on and on with a huge list of professional players and streamers that use this mouse, like Dizzy, Viss, Crafty, Imperial, who just won the $500,000 Apex Legends tournament. And there are so many more. And to me, without a doubt, the G Pro Wireless is the best wireless gaming mouse for its diversity. It's ambidextrous, which is huge for your lefties out there. And even though it's not the lightest mouse out, it is still just 80 grams, which is light in the weight division. It has the best sensor available, excellent actuators, and a great shape and design to accommodate a wide range of users. So you tell me, is the $120 price tag worth the best wireless gaming experience? In my opinion, it is, but I'm still looking forward to testing out the glorious Model O, Model O Minus, and the Cooler Master MM710. But do leave your thoughts and opinions on the G Pro Wireless in the comment section below, and I hope that you all enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed testing it out. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to support your boy and these honest reviews. It is greatly appreciated, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.